guys, this is a video of algebraic tricks for limits when you get zero over zero. This is an example video, so I'm really just gonna plow through like the three basic tricks that you can use. And of course, there are more tricky examples and things like that, so if you have other questions, you can always drop a comment in the description below or on the video, and I'll read it over, and if there's other videos you think I should make, you can always let me know. So in this video, I'm gonna go through these three examples. So if there's a specific example that you're looking for, you can just fast forward to it, or you could always use this as a way to quiz yourself, and then you've got all the solutions right there. Like I said, this is an examples video, so I am just gonna plow straight through these, assuming that you kind of already know the tricks. If you're looking for a longer explanation of how these tricks work, I do have videos on that as well. Okay, so starting with this first one. So here you can see that you get um, zero over zero, and so, a really common trick that you'll use in this case is multiplying by the conjugate, which in this case the conjugate is found by you just take whatever that square root is and then you just flip the sign in between the two terms. So here's the conjugate. So the general practice for this is that when you're multiplying this out, so first of all make sure that you still got the limit notation. That's really important. Um, a lot of calc teachers will take off for that. Now the top part of this you can just FOIL this out as shown. And then the bottom part, what you want to do is, honestly, you probably just want to leave this alone for a moment. So the reason why you want to leave this alone and not multiply it together is very often what will happen as you're working through this, you will find that something actually cancels out with the bottom. So if it doesn't, then you might want to work out the bottom, but this is just like a good best practice here. And so you can see then just by looking at this, so my square roots here are going to drop out, my ones drop out. So now I'm just left with the limit as x approaches zero of three x over x times the square root of three x plus one plus one. And so now you can see, right, the x's will drop out like that. And so this is kind of what you're looking for then when you're working with limits like this. You're looking to get this into a place where if you actually plug in kind of what your limit is going to, you no longer get zero over zero. So notice now if I plug zero into this, I'm not gonna get zero over zero anymore. So instead of what I'm gonna get in this case is three over the square root of three times zero plus one plus one. So this will actually come out to three over two. So that'll be my answer in this case. So. A lot of times this will work out like this, not always, but you know, just best practice to kind of wait a second before you start multiplying it out. I notice a lot of times when my students multiply the x out that it tends to just make the problem a little bit harder. Okay, so for this one, this is a complex fraction. So there's more than one way to do this, but the fastest way to approach this is to actually cancel out your denominators. So the way that you do that is you find the LCD of all fractions. So in this case, my LCD of all fractions would be three times three plus X. Just because this has a three in it doesn't mean that these have any um, factors in common, right? These, these are two terms, this is one, so they just, they, they don't have anything in common. Now, what you wanna do with this LCD is you wanna multiply it by every single part of the problem. So I'm gonna take three times three plus X, three times three plus X, and this times three times three plus X. Okay. So the reason that I do this is because this will actually allow me to get rid of my denominators. So notice when I multiply this fraction times this, well, the three plus X is actually gonna drop out. And same thing over here. So here I've got one over three times all this. So I've got the threes will drop out. So remember once again to bring along your limit notation because we have not evaluated the limit yet. And here's what I'm left with, right? So this three, minus this three plus X. Okay, now in the bottom, I still haven't multiplied this together yet because I'm just gonna wait to see what happens. A lot of times something will drop out. So we're just waiting to see if that happens. Okay, so now I am gonna work out the top and this is just gonna leave me with negative X over three X times three plus X. And now once again, you can see very similar to the last problem the x's actually drop out. So now I'm left with the limit as x approaches zero of negative one over three times three plus x. And once again, I'm now in the situation where I can actually just plug in um, my, my number here. So now if I evaluate the limit, this will all become negative one 
over 3 times 3 plus 0. And so ultimately that's negative 1 over 9. So that would be the answer for that one. Now for this last one. So uh, once again, just notice here that you would indeed um, get 0 over 0. And so for this one, even though this one's a little bit odd because it doesn't have um, any numbers in it, this one we can actually factor. Now you might have to take a second to actually convince yourself of that. So this is a difference of squares. So just to try to convince you of that, so just, just go with me here for a moment. So notice if I had x squared minus 4, that would factor as x minus 2, x plus 2. Now what if I had x squared minus 25? You would tell me that's x minus 5 times x plus 5. And what if I had x squared minus 36? You tell me that that's x minus 6, x plus 6. Okay, so I'm bringing this up because sometimes um, when you look at things like this, your brain might say, okay, I see that they're squares and I feel like it should be the difference of squares, but I can't figure out how I would factor this. So what you do to kind of get your brain to go along with you is you establish the pattern and you remind yourself, how does this work with numbers? If you, if you can do this with numbers, then you should be able to figure it out with letters. Okay, so here's kind of the whole thing. And so then if I just reverse the order, so just notice what happens here. So if I take 36 minus x squared, so that just reverses the order of the factorization, right? So it would look like this. All right, so now instead of having a number here, now I have x plus h. But I can see that this is x plus h squared, and basically I'm just taking the square root of each one of these numbers, right? So the way that this is going to factor then, so don't forget your limit notation, this will be x plus h plus x, and then x plus h minus x. So there's how that factors. So let me get rid of the rest of this. Okay, so now you'll notice that some things can actually be simplified now with how we've, we've actually factored this. So you want to make whatever simplifications that you can. So this set of parentheses will be 2x plus h, and this set of parentheses will just be h, and then all of this over h, which then allows me to cancel out those h's. Okay, so now I can finish this. So now I've just got to evaluate 2x plus h, so now I can really just plug in h for 0. And so the final answer in this case is just 2x. So we actually end up with an x in this case because we, we actually started with two letters, right? So we were just looking to have one of the letters drop out. So in this case, the answer would just be 2x. And so that'll do it for this set of examples. Although if you have other examples that you're interested in, you can always leave me a comment or you can send me an email or, you know, whatever. Hopefully this was helpful to you though, and I'll see you guys next time.